Davidson's early history from 1837 until the Civil War was deeply interwoven with slavery. Nearly every president and faculty member and trustee was a slaveholder. And so the history of Maxwell Chambers, while painful and difficult to read for all of us, was part of the wider story of Davidson um, in the, at that time. After Chambers died, um, the college inherited five enslaved persons who became property of the college. And Davidson inherited the factory in Salisbury, which later, well after Chambers' death, the college sold to a representative of the Confederacy. Given all of that history and the involvement of almost every figure in the founding of the school, to take the name off one building, however central, uh, does not expunge the college from the history of slavery. We have work to do and our focus is directly on the present and the future. Work to do on education and racial reconciliation and that's where our focus will be now. What happens in, in understanding history, and particularly history in the United States relative to slavery and, and race, we're confronted with the um, you know, the underbelly of, of, of who we were, where we were at a certain point in time. And the question then is, what is our responsibility to today? What is our responsibility to the future? What makes this question not so simple is that you can, you can remove stuff, names, statues, whatever, and I can make an argument about why that is useful in some cases and maybe not useful in other cases. But what we don't want to do, what we never want to do, is forget that history. Because that is the recipe to have it repeated. That is one of the reasons why we struggled uh, with this, uh, why it wasn't so simple. And I, I don't think it's a closed chapter. I think there is work that still needs to be done to understand the dimensions of our history even more. I'm grateful to the historians, to uh, Dr. Green and to many others, including students who have taken up uh, to try to learn more about Davidson's history. So one of the things about Maxwell Chambers, he is not the only one in our early history tied to enslavement. And he, our presidents, our board of trustees, uh, there are people who are who are making money, who are making decisions about the college, had ties to the institution. What makes him a part is the gift that he gives. And I think because of that, it's easy to forget that a board of trustees member, unless you read the will, was an executor of his estate. It's easy to forget some of the early presidents who enslaved people and made um, their mark through enslavement. It's easy to forget the early faculty because their mark was limited to a few individuals rather than his gift benefited the institution in ways that had a larger impact on our foundation going forward, especially the ability to survive the Civil War. And that Chambers the building gets divorced from Chambers the man. Like uh, Phi and you, Oak and Elm, we talk about those spaces. Chambers became one of those central spaces that united people. And so for Chambers, I think separating both the man and what he did and put him in context of enslavement versus the will and what the institution's able to do with the will, that makes him a little bit different. These truths are awful and gut-wrenching for all of us. The institution of slavery was a plague on this nation that left generation after generation of damage to families and an excruciating divide in our society. It's disturbing beyond description that the college was so deeply enmeshed in it, and it runs counter to our foundational commitments. It's counter to who we are. What we've learned reminds us, even in present times, how far short of our values we can fall in hewing to the conventions of the day. The report on Maxwell Chambers will be painful for members of our close community, and more so for those who trace their own lineage back to enslaved persons. Learning these details strengthens our resolve to do the hard work, to fulfill our responsibility to build a just and humane college community and a better world. Why are we here? 
we are an institution of higher ed. We do research, we study from our past, we try to make informed decisions. Now we have more knowledge of our past. What kind of questions should we ask going forward to fill in the gaps that are now there? I'd honestly say that many of the committee members, as I did myself, thought that the straightforward answer would be to remove the name of Chambers from the core building. But as we got into the process and looked at the factors and looked at various pieces of information about the building and about the life of Maxwell Chambers, and frankly, the complicity of the whole college and not just one person in the institution of slavery, things got much more complicated. Now that we know what we know, what does it mean? What, what does it change? What do, what do we do differently? I think another aspect of, of the tension or the struggle over this kind of gut-wrenching type of decision is that ultimately our job is, is fiduciaries of the college, as people who've been entrusted with um, carrying this institution forward, is we really want to heal. I respect uh, individuals' perspectives on removing the name, keeping the name, but specifically on the removing the name. You know, I'm, I'm an African-American uh, graduate of Davidson College, class of 79. I was the only black male in my senior class, uh, graduating class. I have a really good sense of those feelings that one might have in a certain moment in their life. And so if I engaged a person like, uh, like that in a conversation, my first reaction would be to respect their position. Um, but then I would communicate with that, that individual around the committee's process as it relates to being charged by the board to manage this exceptional removal of a name like Chambers on the Chambers building. And that process that we went through, that, that, that very involved detailed process that we went through that involved years of research, years of analysis. And so maybe the, the perspective that I would focus in on uh, as part of all of that is the shortcut would be to remove the name and the concern would be that the attention would be on the removal of the name and there will be so many people that with the removal of the name, we're done. There's nothing else that needs to occur. Whereas by keeping the name, we acknowledge the history of the college as it relates to slavery, to Maxwell Chambers, and all the work that we need to do. That's why it's so important right now that the board and senior leadership, we've made a, a deep commitment across multiple initiatives to make sure that we're working on education and on racial reconciliation. Um, the community can judge uh, our efforts and the success of the college in this area by what we accomplish, by the work that we've started and the work that we have yet to do. We'll continue our educational efforts first through our curriculum with our fantastic faculty educating and learning together about race in America and how we can move forward towards a more inclusive community. We'll be using the Beaver Dam Plantation site for important archeological and archival research. And it will be an educational site for local community members as well. The commemoration with these hands will be a sacred site where people can gather and work together on reconciliation and learning about our past as we work together for the future. And we'll support faculty and student and community research to learn about others in our history and how it connects with us continual striving towards justice. That's a lot of work and we're in it again for the long haul.